Hi, this is Sue Field from Health Force Minnesota, and I'd like to share with you a wonderful opportunity for increasing the number of students in your healthcare career pathways using what we have um, called healthcare core curriculum. Very exciting what's happening around the state with this, and I wanted to be able to share this with you. What is a healthcare core curriculum? It's a series of entry level courses that students can take that really are foundational for any healthcare career or setting that they may be interested in going into. It has career exploration in it, but then it also has competencies which are basic for all healthcare careers. It's a standardized curriculum developed in Minnesota by Minnesota faculty and by high school instructors for our high schools and college partners. It's been a fascinating journey to see how this has expanded and what it can offer to you. We have multiple high schools right now throughout the state that are offering the healthcare core curriculum in either their health, health science programs or perhaps just in their high school. Many of them are doing concurrent enrollment with colleges. Others are doing it articulated credit. What our vision is, is for college healthcare career programs, particularly those that are low on numbers, if they are somehow or another able to require all or part of the healthcare core curriculum, then they can market that to high school students with the incentive that if you've taken this course in high school, it will go towards a career pathway for you in the college setting. Many of our high schools are adopting this curriculum. And the other thing that we have developed with this curriculum is also a national exam, once again developed by Minnesota faculty and high school instructors. And it is a national exam specific for measuring the competencies of the healthcare core curriculum. It can be taken at the high school or the college level and typically is covered by Perkins funds. And it really gives you an idea of whether or not your students are meeting the competencies set forth by those who wrote the curriculum. The two main resources that we have for this curriculum is a online Educate the Educator course. So that one is for the instructor who's gonna teach the course. And that's required in order to teach the course. The other one is a completely online course that has been developed in D2L that you can do for a lease. And that is just such an awesome opportunity to have because it's very interactive and it cuts down on that preparation time for the instructors. First of all, I want to explain to you the Educate the Educator course. This is a self-paced online seven module course and it's $150 and the faculty member taking this receives seven continuing education clock hours. Upon completion of the course, they have access to all of the online curriculum and a certificate of completion. The resources that are available for teaching this include instructor resource guides, PowerPoint presentations, learning activities, website links, YouTubes and movies, and assessment methods, including quizzes and rubrics for grading assignments. The other portion, so that was the Educate the Educator course. The other portion is the new online healthcare core course for students. It is a 64 hour course fully developed in D2L it includes the seven modules or, or mini sessions for the healthcare core uh, course. And the lessons have actually been de developed up in soft chalk by somebody who's been teaching this curriculum for years. What we do then is we have the lessons up in the cloud and then we link them down to different college D2L um, courses. And those cloud lessons will be kept updated on a yearly basis so that we're sure that websites work and YouTube videos are still current. And if there's any changes to the national standards, because all of this curriculum is developed off of national standards, we can make sure that it keeps up to date. 
We have assignments and discussions and quizzes that are also in the D2L course. Those are all modifiable by the instructor. This year for the 2016-2017 school year, we are offering this on a lease for $500 a year as we're just piloting it. Not sure what the price will be in the future, but our goal is to get this out there and not make money on it. Once again, we have this national assessment, which is great because whether it's a high school student or a college instructor, you can find out whether or not your students are learning what they need to learn and you can identify the strengths and weaknesses of your course and then it also meets the state and federal assessment requirements uh, particularly for the high school students so what i'd like to do at this point before i go into this curriculum much i would like to show you what our online course looks like so you have an idea if this is even something that you are interested in so what I'm gonna do first is take you to the table of contents so you can see what we have in here. We've got an introduction, we've got the course outline and a curriculum outline, and then we have a place for your syllabi. And then if you notice, we, we identify them as modules. Module one we have as behaviors for success in the healthcare setting. So here we're looking at different types of healthcare facilities and systems employment, accountability and responsibility, dress code, behavior, approaches to teamwork or individual work, policies, looking also at writing resumes and cover letters and looking at wellness as well as a uh, employee, looking at the balance between work and personal life. Under this particular module, we have the lessons that are in soft chalk. These are the purple ones that are denoted um, as a BFS, so Behaviors for Success Lesson 1A. Here's Careers in Healthcare. This is where we have healthcare exploration. Then we have healthcare systems. Then we have a discussion and assignment. And then we have a couple more lessons, Behaviors and Personal Characteristics for Healthcare, Personal Appearance and Hygiene. And then we have a discussion assignment. And then this one has one quiz. Remember that the discussions assignments and quizzes are all you can when you take the educate the educator course if you find a assignment that you say oh this would really fit for these students you can just swap that out with what we have these are just samples that you can use the behavior for success quizzes i have all the quiz questions that have been developed up in the library for the quizzes but i haven't linked them up to the tables of contents yet because I figured uh, faculty will want to decide which questions they like and which ones they don't. Module two is awareness and sensitivity to client needs, looking at individuals, emotional, spiritual, and social needs, also looking at eight different age groups, deaf and dying. Here we have uh, human growth and development, basic human needs, discussion assignment quiz, the family, acute and chronic illness, those are two lectures, um, discussion assignment quiz. What I'd like to do is show you what one of these lessons look like that come from the soft chalk. And so when you get this course, the first thing when you open this, you're going to see that it comes out as a score center. And that is because each one of these, if they have some type of a quiz or interactive assignment embedded in the soft chalk, this is the opportunity for you to determine how many points you would like the student to get, how many attempts they would like, you would like them to have. So for example, you can change the grading method here. So maybe it's the first four that you count. Change the maximum attempts. You can have them complete all attempts. So whatever you want to do, uh, you can have that in here. Then to view lesson, you can either go up into the student mode or you can view lesson here. And I'll go into the student mo um, mode just to show you what that looks like. So let me go back here. And here it is with the student mode now a uh, role. I have been in here several times, so I'll have some pop-ups that come in saying that uh, I'm resuming it. 
the first thing I wanted to show you on this is that over here we have it, it popped up here that there this was a lesson and that so far I've got eight out of 20 points so as a student you will see that here we've got all the pages of the content of this this particular um, lesson and so to, to work this we'll just go to page one here we have the competencies that we will be covering in this course or in this particular section. This is on human growth and development, I believe. Here's human needs. There's some pictures in there, some didactic on it. Okay, here's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Down here is a little video. It's like a three minute um, explanation of what Maslow's is, YouTube video. Physiological needs. We've got information on that. This one here is on safety. And here's a YouTube video on dental anxiety management. So the students will watch that. Love and affection. There is a YouTube video on a clinically dead baby re revived by mother's touch. Next, we'll find um, esteem. And here's Nursing Home Insurance Improving Residency. I'm not sure what the whole title is, but that's a YouTube video. And then Self-Actualization. So that's the lesson in this. At the end, they'll kind of pull it all together, meeting needs. And then they'll have a lesson summary. This right here is going to link the student out to a learning activity on Maslow's Hierarchy of Human Needs exercise. But this next part is going to be where they will have actually um, assignments that will be graded. And it'll go right directly into Dropbox. As you see, I've already done this assignment, but I can restart this. And so the students have to identify where the different um, items go in this. And then they'll get points accordingly. So self-actualization up at the top, safety and security. And so here successfully submitted, I got a total of eight points. So next we'll go to the next page there. Whoops, one page too far here. Or page 11, I must have been on 10. Okay, we had that one. Oh, here it is down there. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so here you can click on a deck of cards and you can identify application-wise where this particular um, statement goes. I know I can be class um, president. Is it love and affection? No. Nope. Is it esteem? Nope. Is it self-actualization? Yes. Um, here's another one. Please lock the door. We got safety. So you can see you can go down. I did not get, I have one out of 10 so far. Let's try one more. These people are in the office are just mean. Let's put it under physical. So I didn't get that one. I still only have um, one out of 10. And even though I get it correct this time, my score is still one out of 10. This right here, I can't remember what this one here was. Let's see. Oh, this was a quiz that they have embedded. And you can see that I answered those. Well, some of them I didn't answer. This was incorrect. That one I got correct. That one was incorrect. And that one was right and right. So really good things in here. And then automatically this score will go into the student's um, grade book. So I wanted to show you what this particular course is like. And let me see if I can get out of here. Okay, so then going back over to the table of contents, so we have the awareness and sensitivity to clients' needs, a discussion assignment quiz, two lessons, lesson 2A and B, uh, a discussion assignment and quiz. Communication in healthcare, that's going to look at personal communication, teamwork communication, as well as uh, conflict management, documentation, electronic medical records, all those things. Uh, this second one, 1B, one the therapeutic communication virtual simulation is something that was developed open source on a national scope 
excellent, excellent in teaching communication skills where the students get practice with actual talking people. Um, so we have here once again, three lessons, discussion, assignment, and quiz, teamwork, leadership, conflict management, discussion, assignment, and quiz. Then we have healthcare ethics. And here we are looking at personal and professional values, professional boundaries, discussion, assignment, and quiz, ethical decision-making, discussion, assignment, and quiz. Legal issues, issues in healthcare, we're looking at healthcare laws, HIPAA virtual simulation, discussion, assignment, and quiz, social media in the medical community, discussion, assignment, and quiz. Respecting client and staff diversity is cultural diversity with your patients and with your um, people that you work with. So we have a lesson here on that, a discussion, assignment, and a quiz. Healthcare safety and standard precautions. We've got healthcare safety, discussion, assignment, and quiz. Infection control and standard precautions, discussion, assignment, and quiz. And then at the very end is a final project, a healthcare portfolio, where the student puts in their cover letter and their resume and any awards that they have received. And then they have to put this together, um, also having some community service time. And then they have to put work samples in here for each one of the units. So really, really well done course. And like I said, if you're interested in, in leasing that, please let me know and we can get that leased for you. I can, it's just a matter of um, I downloading it into your DQL. Um, just so the modules, each one of them, awareness and sensitivity to clients needs is eight hours. Behaviors for success in healthcare settings is eight hours and has career exploration. Communication in healthcare is 16 hours. Healthcare ethics is eight hours. Healthcare legal issues is eight hours. Respecting client and staff diversity is eight hours. Healthcare safety and standard precautions is eight hours. So we've got these seven modules. They can be offered in any order. They can be packaged any way that you want. I've got some colleges that want them in two separate two credit classes, others that do them in a one four credit course, others that do them in half credit, six half credits, and one one credit. Totally up to you how you want to use them. They are customizable. So how do colleges use them right now? They use them as foundational courses for allied health programs. They have many of the high school um, students that are taking it in high school, and then they've got those credits towards that allied health program. And I'm just going to give you a few examples. Oh, before I give you the examples, I do want you to know that the healthcare core is an approved pathway to the nursing assistant, and I'll show you what that means. The Minnesota Department of Health really love the healthcare core for those soft skills that they teach. So if a program uses the 64-hour HCCC, and then they would have 24 hours of clinical and 40 hours of lab, so it becomes 128 hours total. So it's called the 128-hour HCCC Nursing Assistant Skills course. Um, the instructor must complete that HCC Educate the Educator, and they turn that certificate into the Minnesota Department of Ed as a pathway to nursing assistant. So we right now have two approved nursing assistant curriculums in Minnesota that our colleges use. They can use this one here, the 128 HCC Nursing Skills Lab Clinical, you must, if you're going to use this, you must have it pre-approved by MDH before you even start your HCCC course. And you must be able to track all 128 hours for the students. Second, we have the 75-hour Minnesota State Nursing Assistant course, which is what our colleges are using right now. The HCC is not required. That one has 16 hours clinical and 59 hours lab and lecture. The HCCC, you could use it as a prerequisite if you wanted, but it would not be required for the 75 hour from the Minnesota Department of Health. So I wanna show you how a few of our colleges are using the Healthcare Core. Minneapolis Community and Technical College has a four credit Healthcare Core curriculum course taught at Roosevelt High School. They also have the nursing assistant tied to that, which is a pathway to their ADRN. 
They also require it for essential service technician certificate for 10 credits. So it's four credits in the high school plus six credits in the college. And then they also have it for dental support personnel uh, certificate for 17 credits. And then it's a pathway to dental assistant diploma. And then they have it for the 12 credit pharmacy technician certificate pathway to pre-pharmacy. Anoka Ramsey uses it with five high schools and they have articulated credit and that goes towards a pharmacy technician. They use three credits towards that for a 30 credit certificate. And then they also can use it as an elective in their integrative health and healing. And as you see, those are pathways to other degrees as well. Pine Technical offers it, they teach it through the college on a contract and they contracted ITV to 13 high schools and they use the HCCC plus another 17 credits for their healthcare pre-professional. They use it for nursing assistant, which is a pathway to their nursing programs, and they use it for their medical assistant program.